Here at ASCO 2013, I'm Thomas Baldrick along with Ralph Boshe, MD, from the Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders in Bethesda, Maryland. And he's here to talk about his poster on a new delivery system for treating chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. Thank you, sir, for coming by. Well, thank you. Before we get to your poster, can you tell us about this new system, what it is, how it works, and how it came about? Sure. So this is a new delivery system to deliver an old drug, Renesitron. Renesitron falls into a category of antiemetics that we call 5-HT3 antagonists. We have a number of 5-HT3 uh, antagonists that are available and they're generally delivered either intravenously or by mouth. This is a new system to deliver this old drug in an orthoester, which basically is like an oil that administered subcutaneously allows for the drug to be absorbed and released slowly so that we can attempt to cover patients nausea and vomiting for an extended period of time. We always say that there are two phases of chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. One we call acute which would be by definition within the first 24 hours and then uh, delayed nausea and vomiting would occur after that and can occur up to a week later. So this delivery system allows for the slow release so that patients have therapeutic drug levels for up to five days. This allows them to be covered for both the acute as well as the delayed phase. It also allows it to be used in a multi-day chemotherapy regimen. How did you do the study? Well, we, we took the drug and, and compared it to what is probably the best available therapy now, a, a drug called um, ondansetron or, or aloxy. And we um, studied patients who had either moderate emetogenic uh, chemotherapy drugs or highly emetogenic chemotherapy drugs and we stratified them into two groups. We administered during the first cycle, we randomized patients to either get the APF 530, this new delivery system of the Granisetron, in two different doses. Uh, a third arm of the study was to was a randomization that included an arm that had this Onansetron or, or Aloxy. Um, I'm sorry, palinocitron. I didn't mean ondansetron, palinocitron. So it was palinocitron versus a 250 milligram dose of the APF 530 or a 500 milligram dose of the APF 530. Again, in groups of patients and stratified by whether they had moderately emetogenic or highly emetogenic chemotherapy. After the first cycle, uh, patients then were randomized um, if they had received the palinocitron or aloxy to the APF530 drug in one of those two other schedules. And we studied patients for four full cycles. So we were looking at and asking the question of whether we could reduce their acute nausea and vomiting and their delayed nausea and vomiting. And we were able to do that in the first cycle compared to aloxy and those two doses, and then look to see cycle by cycle what happened. Was the drug, did the drug lose its effectiveness? Did it maintain it or did it build on it? What did you find? What are the results you've been sharing? What we found is that we could completely control nausea or vomiting, what we call a complete response, in about 70 to 80 percent of patients. And that went from the acute phase all the way through the chronic phase. That's one thing we found. We found that it was, quote, not inferior to palinocitron or aloxy, which is considered, I think, by most to be the, the most effective antiemetic in the 5-HT3 uh, class of drugs. So this actually took a drug that when the granisetron, when it was being developed as an oral or an IV agent, and showed a similar comparativity to it, a similar efficacy to the palinocitron's uh, aloxy um, in this delivery system at those levels, where that wasn't the case when it was compared in the intravenous form or the oral form. This is a real concern for many patients, the fear of nausea and vomiting. But we, we know nausea and vomiting actually to be the most feared side effect the patients um, have when they um, get chemotherapy, both their first cycle and subsequent cycles. It's, it's more feared than hair loss, which is you know something that we often think about maybe is the most feared. It's nausea or vomiting because it, it 
clearly diminishes quality of life. It sometimes makes patients dehydrated and they can get dehydrated enough that they end up in the hospital. And it um, can sometimes seriously limit their ability to get the effective chemotherapy drugs they need to control their cancer. So yes, it's one of the worst potential side effects that we see in cancer therapy. So is a phase three trial next on the horizon? So a phase three trial is next on the horizon. We have enough activity from this trial that we would like to see the drug registered and be available for clinical use. So that is something we hope to perhaps open up by the end of the year. Very good. Congratulations to you. Best of luck going Thank forward. Thank you so much. Ralph Boucher, MD from the Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders in Bethesda, Maryland.